Oh, hello, everybody. Hope you're all coping as best you can with the news of the world. Um, let's just distract ourselves for a few minutes here. I've got a little show and tell for you today. What does Uncle Fester have to show? A Sinclair ZX81 kit. So if you wanted to for a hundred bucks, you can, you could have ordered this kit and you'd have to solder it all together yourself. So I purchased this from the original owner who never got around to doing that. And it really is a museum piece, I think. So let's look at the box. What I like about the box here is um, the detailed instructions on uh, what it looks like. It's a much bigger one than on the Timex Sinclair box. See, that on the Timex Sinclair, they just use this little diagram here. So let's look at this box and compare it to the uh, Timex Sinclair box. So you saw the front cover with a nice big image of it and that nice Sinclair logo. So here's your Sinclair ZX81 personal computer. And uh, it says here, Made in the UK, Sinclair Research Limited, 25 Willis Road, Cambridge, CB12AQ as the postal code. So, um, yeah, I'll be posting pictures and the manual on archive.org. So, this edge is just uh, telling you what it is when you see it on the shelf. Um, okay, it looks like a duplicate of the other edge uh, with the same address. And this a duplicate of the other edge. So, yeah, you saw the front and the back. Okay. So, we're going to unbox this today. But let's first look at the Timex, the, the common one. So, these computers enabled lots of people to learn programming. And these people who learned on a Timex Sinclair are doing amazing things now because they had a struggle with the little membrane keyboard and learning basic and figuring it out themselves. Um, the, the people who just bought it commercially, all assembled and everything, but the people who actually built it were the hardcore engineers. Okay, so here's the, the Timex box, Sinclair 1000, and the little image here. Let me just read the instructions, say. Uh, pack includes computer, power adapter, leads, plugs for connection to TV and cassette recorder. Also includes a full instruction and computing course manual. So your own TV, color or black and white. Lead and plugs for TV connections. Timex Sinclair 1000 personal computer, the Timex Sinclair manual, specially written guide to computing, the power adapter ensures correct power, lead and plugs for cassette recorder connection, your own portable cassette recorder, useful but not essential <laughs> to store programs on ordinary cassettes. Well, if you're just typing three line programs, you don't need to store them, but if you want to retrieve them later, Cassette was what you had for this. There was later, I think there were some disk drives. So looking at the difference between these diagrams, how to set up your ZX81 personal computer and just Timex Sinclair 1000 down here. Pack includes ZX81 personal computer and here it says pack includes computer, power adapter, leads, plugs for connections to TV and cassette recorder. Okay, so I read that in the video, but here, um, it looks like exactly the same. No, but this one says mains adapter, not power adapter. So in British, we call it mains. <laughs> Leads plugs for connection to TV and cassette recorder. And full instructions and computing course manual. Here it says also includes a full instruction and computing course manual. So you could imagine the person designing this box seeing this, full instructions and computing course manual, that doesn't make sense to Americans, also includes a full instruction and computing course manual. Okay, so uh, let's just see what's different about the diagram here. What does it say under here? Personal computer. Sinclair ZX81 personal computer in blue, hard to read, 
Yeah, we're not telling you. That, yeah, we're saying it's personal, right? How personal do you want your computer? So here, it's ZX81 personal computer, Timex Sinclair 1000 personal computer, ZX81 manual, specifically written guide to computing, Timex Sinclair manual, specifically written guide to computing, Sinclair mains power, Sinclair mains adapter ensures correct power. Power adapter ensures correct power. And the, the TV set, your own TV, color or black and white, your own TV, color or black and white, then leads and plugs for TV connections is the same, for connections, that's plural here, leads, this is singular, lead, <laughs> lead and plugs for TV connection, period. And this one says lead and plugs for TV connections. And did they skip a period? Yes. Or no, it's a tiny period. Okay. Uh, lead and plugs for cassette recorder uh, connections. Same text there. Lead and plugs. Okay, so those are the differences in the boxes. I appreciate the beauty. Okay, so the back of the Timex Sinclair box has their marketing. Revolutionary technology makes this computer possible. Well, for 1981, 82, 83, it was. The Timex Sinclair 1000 is the first personal computer featuring our new microchip design. The design utilizes four powerful microchips, which we're going to look at on the ZX81 kit, including a unique master chip that replaces as many as 18 chips on other personal computers. That's the ULA chip. The Timex Sinclair 1000 with the optional 16K RAM pack accessory is a compact computer with all the power and high performance capacity you are likely to need for personal use for 40 years. <laughs> um, 16K RAM, think about that. That's 16 kilobytes, not megabytes, not gigabytes, not petabytes. 16,000 bytes of 8 bits each, but um, the actual computer came with 2K. If you didn't get that 16K RAM pack for 50 bucks or so, you had 2K here, and on the ZX81, you only had 1K. So the ZX81 started off in Europe, and um, it was available in kit form, and uh, as well, the Sinclair... I'm not sure if it was a kit or not. I've seen an ad that shows all the parts laid out for a hundred bucks. <laughs> and if you wanted to assemble this more. Um, complete, ready to use, connects easily to your TV set for video display, uses standard audio cassette recorder for program input and recording, complete, easy to understand instruction booklet inside. This is the booklet. And um, I have the booklet for the ZX81, and it's interesting to compare these two booklets so you could see what was changed when the Timex Sinclair came out from Sinclair's original manual for the ZX81. It's interesting to see the little differences in the text. Okay, it's not just a change all ZX81 to Timex 1000, it's more than that. <laughs> okay, um, easy to learn uses basic computer language, the easiest computer language to understand, easy to program, unique, simple way of entering computer instructions, part of expandable system, 2K memory expandable with optional 16K RAM pack, printer can be added, communications device can be added to gain access to outside data banks and other telecommunications services. The good old days of 300 baud modems and BBSs. Extensive line of Timex software available. Household, business, education, entertainment. So can you run a business on a Timex Sinclair? Think about that. Backed by Timex service. 90 day warranty. Timex service contract available. Well, you only had 90 days to test it out at home, and if your TV picture was not good enough and you didn't like it, you could return it. Uh, but uh, if there was an electronics issue, and like uh, it was a problem. So the Timex inside box 
just has this uh, indentation, Timex Sinclair 1000. But let's open up the ZX81 box and look at the beautiful indentations on the styrofoam. Okay, I've previously opened this, but I put it back in the box this morning so I can do the video. Okay, so it's a nice clamshell styrofoam. And look at this beautiful logo, Sinclair, with a little dot in the middle. I think that's just beautiful the way that comes out. It's like, wow, I spent a hundred dollars. At least I got a nice styrofoam. I'll probably be exhibiting this at an upcoming VCF or other uh, events. Now, I'm going to turn the computer so you can see what we're looking at. Okay, get the manuals out of the way. So look inside the box here. So I actually um, took out the chips as um, a, because I didn't want them inside this and I put them into an anti-static bag. Okay, so let's see if you can get a better picture here. All right, so you have this, which has all the components inside. You have the cassette cable which is two single mono jacks. And then you have um, your RCA jack for connecting to the RF modulator. That's a cable. Then what do we have here? We have, okay, so there's the power supply. This is the beautiful ZX81 power supply with uh, the plug-in core that's connected to it. And, uh, this uh, jack to the same connection that you would use for an Atari 2600, a uh, single uh, plug-in uh, mono jack, which was the power jack in those days. And uh, let's see, it says down here, made in, oh, UK. Okay, so it's British. And uh, Sinclair ZX power supply, very simple with nice little rubber feet. And uh, Sinclair, I like this edge, this little curve up here. It says Sinclair ZX power supply. Input is 110 volts AC, 60 hertz. Output is 9 volts DC at 0 0.7 amps. So that's 700 milliamps. So I noticed that the, the Timex power supplies, they quoted them in amps back in the day, right before milliamps became popular. And it says, disconnect from mains when not in use for indoor use only, USA 700. So this is a USA version, but made in England. Interesting. So that's interesting. They say disconnect from your main power when not in use. And I find I do that a lot uh, with wall warts and transformers because it saves power. Because otherwise it's feeding power into the power supply all the time. So let's put this aside. Now, this is the RF modulator. I'm keeping these in the bag. Um, I may, when I exhibit, I'll keep all the bags together and take it out. But uh, you had your TV or computer switch and you could connect it to an antenna on your back of your TV. And I guess this would go to the UHF antenna. Interesting. Yeah, so um, there is no coax, it's only antenna, and your um, RCA jack down here connects to the RCA cable. Okay, then there's another bag which has the heat sink that's needed for the um, voltage regulator. And here's the internal RF modulator. So I'm not gonna open these bags, I'm just showing you what's in them. And then there are the connections for the keyboard and the audio jacks and the power jack. Okay, so those little baggies are in there. And then um, nice plastic wrapped ZX81. And I'm just gonna let you appreciate the design. I'm gonna take it out of the baggie, leave the chips in here for now. So look at this beauty. Um, so this is before the keyboard is installed. There's a nice Sinclair logo raised. I guess that's embossed, but the ZX81 and uh, the shape. 
So the manufacturing to get that shape, whatever molds they used. So it's a clam, it's two, two pieces. And on the back, here's the back. Um, let's see, you plug in, yeah, it's got space here. Let me just see what's written on it. Uh, nothing up top. Okay, it says Sinclair ZX81 personal computer. Use only approved AC adapter, patent pending, made in UK. Well, only the approved one, if it's 40 years old, you may not want to use it if it's been through something or, or if an original owner used it a lot. So here, this comes off. This is the top piece, all plastic. You got stand, uh, the screw holes there with these raised standoffs. So think about how much it costs to set up manufacturing for this. Okay, and now, Underneath that you have all your parts neatly in this tray, but I'm going to show you the keyboard membrane. This is a beauty. The only difference that I found to a Timex Sinclair is that this is called New Line instead of Enter or Return. Uh, what do they call it? It's uh, Enter, I think. Yeah, it's Function and Enter. So this has Function and New Line. So the British call it new line, the United States call it enter. And this is interesting, the, the keyboard electronics connector to the motherboard. It's really flimsy paper. <laughs> and uh, when you get thing, other computers that people have used, that that can easily break. So it's nice seeing a pristine keyboard membrane. And then if you look closely, you can see some traces inside the membrane. And people get replacement keyboard membranes, but this is an original from the kit that you had to put together yourself. Um, let me show you the chips. So I put them in this anti-static baggie. They came in a little, they came in this little plastic baggie. So you sat in this one for 40 years before I took you out. So here we've got 40 year old foam that's uh, sense uh, anti static foam. Um, but here are the four chips. Uh, so there's actually five because the memory are these two chips, which are 2114 chips. So I'm going to read you the part numbers on each chip. So the ULA is a Ferranti ULA2C210E, and it was manufactured the 41st week of 1982. So on each chip, there's a date stamp. So the first two numbers are the year, 82, and 41 is the 41st week of the year. Now I wonder what's going to happen in 2100. Are we going to have to change our chip stamps or are they going to start using four digit years finally <laughs> okay um, then the z80 processor is not a z80 it's a nec d 780c hyphen one so that's a an equivalent z80 and in, uh, instruct it's compatible with z80 it has the same instruction set, but manufactured differently. So they had multiple suppliers for chips. And this is the one that this kit got. And the manufacturer date is 82, 1982, the 27th week. And it has a P8 at the end. So it's 8227P8. Now the ROM chip, this I found interesting reading about all the the bugs in the early ROMs, but this is a later ROM, manufactured 83, 1983, the seventh week, so early, so that's like the end of February or early March 1983, from Motorola, has the Motorola logo, and it's a ZCM38818P, so I was searching for that online, and I believe it's exactly the same as the Timex Sinclair ROM, it's 83, so it's a later model that doesn't have the bugs that the earlier ones had. Now the two RAM chips, each of these RAM chips holds four bits by 1K. 
that's 1024 bytes. And when you use basic, if uh, commands take a byte and your text takes a byte, so if you're printing a whole bunch of messages in your program, you're gonna use up that 1K really fast. And the Timex will let you know <laughs> it's gonna slow down even slower. Okay, so uh, let's look at the RAM chips. They say NEC Ireland, hey, hey from uh, 8227, the 27th week of 1982, R8 is appended to it. So it's 8227R8. Then it has the micro Greek letter, PD2114LC-1R. So this is your 1K RAM, so you had to solder two chips onto the motherboard. So let's put this away. Oh, and on the back it has all the sockets. So. Um, what I'll probably do is put the chips on a uh, breadboard and uh, keep the sockets on this package so people can see. Um, then I can put it back in the baggie. But for now, I'm put the chips in this electrostatic protective bag. Okay. Let's put this bag away. So save all the bags. This, this may go into a museum one day. All right, so then you have baggies with parts, but let's look at this beautiful motherboard. Look how tiny it is. So the whole computer is six and a half inches by six and a half inches. And um, you would have to mount your sockets, mount resistors, mount capacitors, whatever else it needs. And then um, you would have to mount the, uh, yeah, so we're, oh, they're over here. Okay, so here is, um, the um, outlines where the voltage regulator goes, the nine volts DC jack, your earphone and your microphone. So those are for connecting to your tape recorder. And what's interesting, the earphone jack has to go to the earphone jack of the tape recorder. So they tried to make it easy for users to not think of where to connect, but to, for, <laughs> people used to thinking through, you'd, you'd connect the earphone to the microphone. But, uh, and that, that confused me at first before I read it in the manual when I got my first Timex Sinclair. And what do we have on here? The, the RF modulator goes over here and um, the connections are FR3 as one hole, FR2 slash USA3, and then there's a UK2, USA2 and FR1 slash UK1 and a USA1. So based on what country you're in and what type of RF modulator you're using, you would connect to one of those, UK, France, or USA. And um, I did a composite mod on a Timex Sinclair, which uses a few of these jacks plus the ULA pin that has the composite output. Okay. Anything else interesting on here? Yeah, it's just, uh, okay, so your ICs go here. IC1, IC2, IC3, IC4 has two sockets. If you had a, a different IC for RAM, it would be a bigger chip over here. Okay, so IC1 is the Ferranti ULA, which really glues all the logic together in those, it replaces those 18 chips that other computers would need to communicate with the CPU, communicate with your I.O. devices, uh, bring things in and out of memory. Okay, your IC2 is your ROM, and those are the fixed instructions for starting up the computer, displaying on the screen, loading from tape, all that machine code is in the ROM, okay? then your CPU is IC3, and this is the Z80, or the equivalent of a Z80, which they gave us in this kit. Um, then your RAM, that's your read access memory, random access memory, where you'd store your program code or your data as it's using it interactively. And your keyboard connector is down here. You have to put in the sockets very carefully, and the membrane keyboard will go in there. And you need a heat sink over here for the voltage regulator. And then the uh, peripheral um, expansions um, fingers are here, 
so you'd plug in your 16K RAM or your printer there. Okay, anything else interesting here? Um, just other than the labels. Uh, let me just see. Sinclair ZX81 is written on it right over here. And on the back, let's look at this back, these traces. Isn't that just beautiful? Okay, it says uh, Sinclair 1980. Issue one, Sinclair, yeah, copyright 1980, and it has a PCP on it. Uh oh, it's taking drugs, uh, and it has a, a logo which has a large, looks like a large P, going around a C and a B. So I guess that's the manufacturer of the printed circuit board. But let's see if you can take a closer look up here. Yeah, I don't know how well it's going to come out on the video. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the traces are all there. So this is a pristine motherboard before any chips were on. And look at the gray color. I, I have one that's a red, and I think there were some green ones. So that's your motherboard. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. Now we got a bag. It has two resistors, a transistor, and a diode. And the resistors look like uh, red, black, a uh, no, red, a uh, brown, brown, uh, red, 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 brown, green, brown, and the transistor says um, ZTX313. And anything on the back? No. Okay, then you have a bunch of bags held together. So that's got to be preserved in its original state, not, not opening the bags. So here we have some electrolytic capacitors, which have never been used, and they never will be used if this is in a museum. Um, you have a resistor pack. You have a something that says A, what is that? It's probably another resistor pack, A1036. You have a few capacitors, two capacitors, a bunch of resistors. The capacitors are a 10, what? 103 and the one and there's a gray capacitor 10 yeah I mean that the actual values are in the manual the assembly instructions which you could all look at at your leisure so your voltage regulator is here it has three pins you've got some uh, little okay what is this okay transistors there are two transistors it looks like yep you have a three pin you have screws and uh, some foam tape. Yes, so you got to read the instructions of when to put the foam tape on, where, and then are, are the feet in here? Are these the feet? Yeah, the, the, these are the feet. Okay, the, this little thing it, it uh, separates into the four feet, which go on the bottom here. Let's see. These little indentation holes. So you have screw holes on three of the four feet. So in order to open up, you'd have to remove the feet and unscrew the holes. <laughs> Otherwise, it ain't going to open. <laughs> and then a whole bunch of resistors and capacitors in this baggie. And did we look at the? Yes, yeah, so you saw the. Capa electrolytic capacitors, the resistor packs, and then these resistors and the other stuff. So your screws are in here. So this is all assembly stuff. So here's the bottom of the case. So here you have standoffs for um, yeah, the screws going in here. For each screw, you have a hole here that's not on the back. You have these two holes, which uh, I guess that's the nameplate, and uh, yep. Okay, so a little slot for ventilation. Here are the side um, TV ear mic and nine VDC, nine volts direct current, and on the back, uh, yeah, we talked about that. I read that. Okay, now how? Do, what do you do with all this stuff? Well, there's 17 pages. It was stapled. I put it into sheet protectors. 
and the title is ZX81 Assembly Instructions, US version for UHF Channel 33. Dear Kit Builder, congratulations on your purchase of a ZX81 computer kit. We are sure you will get a great deal of satisfaction in using a computer that you yourself built. And there's something in that. When you build something and struggle with the electronics and it doesn't work right at first and you get someone to help you and figure it out what's wrong and fix it, seeing it turn on for the first time and that little K in the cor left-hand corner and uh, that it works, that it loads a cassette, uh, there's some magic in that feeling that you put these discrete electronics together and they work together as a system and enable that their the design is all coming together and working it's reading the rom into the cpu booting up and uh, then you can actually program in basic and test out every function of the machine okay so that was the first paragraph right there second paragraph these instructions are largely a rehash of the ZX81 instructions supplied by Sinclair Research Limited. Although Sinclair's instructions are complete, we feel this information is not given in the best format and the best sequence in which it is required when actually assembling your kit. So mostly what we have done is present the same information in a linear fashion, pointing out what you need to know in the order you need to know it. If you have never soldered before or built an electronics kit before, it would be best to seek the aid of someone with experience to help guide you. If you have even a moderate amount of experience, you should be able to assemble your kit in about three hours of easy work by just carefully following these instructions. Well, that's assuming you have electronics and soldering experience which I have been able to get by going to repair workshops at the Vintage Computer Foundation. And then it says, happy kit building. Enjoy.